fish. You can find an ocean of nutrition with most any type of seafood. Many varieties of fish are rich in diabetes-fighting vitamins and anti-inflammatory, brain health-aiding omega-3 fatty acids. But when it comes to your health, you should know that not all types of fish are equal. Did you know certain types of fish may contribute to heart disease, diabetes, and other health complications? So let's count down the three best and three worst seafood choices for diabetics. Don't forget to like this video and make sure to subscribe to Diabetes Smarts to discover the keys for fighting back against diabetes. Plus, stick around to the end for three amazing free gifts. Okay, so while there are plenty of fish in the sea, let's reveal which ones to get onto your plate and which you should avoid. This is the three best and three worst seafood choices for diabetics. If you love fish, don't worry just yet. It is certainly true that most seafood, especially oily and fatty fish, can bring you some incredible health benefits. So let's start out by taking a deep dive into the three best seafood choices for diabetics. Number three, trout. Native to North America, trout is found abundantly in cold water lakes and rivers. Low in mercury and high in beneficial nutrients, trout is an exceptionally healthy choice when it comes to seafood. Rainbow trout contains a very impressive 17.4 grams of protein per 3 ounce serving. Protein is not only essential to everyone's health, it's vitally important for those suffering from diabetes. Protein, like fiber, slows the digestive process, thus aiding your body in glucose regulation. Meanwhile, trout supplies nutrients which have been proven to aid glucose regulation and cardiovascular health, including calcium, magnesium, niacin, potassium, vitamin B12, aka cobalamin, vitamin D, plus heart-helping mono and polyunsaturated fats. Like most any fatty fish, Trout's supply of omega-3 fatty acids have been shown to lower blood pressure, and studies show that they can work in conjunction with the diabetes medication metformin to reduce triglycerides. Niacin, aka vitamin B3, has been shown to improve blood fat levels by decreasing LDL cholesterol while increasing HDL cholesterol. Potassium aids blood pressure, while calcium improves blood circulation. The body requires vitamin D to properly absorb calcium, but guess what? Rainbow trout supplies vitamin D as well. In fact, a 3 ounce serving of trout can give you over 80% of the recommended daily intake for vitamin D. New studies have revealed that people who consume more magnesium have a lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes, and magnesium supplements may improve insulin sensitivity. So, trout can certainly make its way onto your plate for improved heart health and better glucose regulation. Number 2. Cod This popular type of fish is characterized by its white, flaky skin and mild, versatile taste. Many variations of fish are often referred to as cod, so it can be tricky to know what you're getting when purchasing this type of fish from the supermarket. However, don't worry too much. Both the Atlantic and Pacific variations of cod are incredible sources of lean protein, plus essential vitamins and minerals. In fact, an 85-gram serving of Atlantic cod provides 30% of the recommended daily intake for vitamin B12. The same serving of cod provides over 40% of the recommended daily intake of selenium, a vital nutrient for the health of our metabolism. Plus, cod liver oil is one of the richest sources of vitamin D and vitamin A. In fact, a single teaspoon of cod liver oil will give you over 90% of the RDI for vitamin A and 113% for vitamin D. Obtaining proper amounts of vitamin A can help you reduce the risk of diabetes-related macular degeneration. Vitamin D has multiple vital functions in the body, and it may support weight loss. So, which fish should you catch for the most diabetes-fighting benefits? The answer, of course, is… Number 1. Wild-caught salmon Wild-caught salmon is sourced from natural environments like the ocean, lakes, and rivers. 
but farmed salmon, which is where half of our salmon is currently sourced worldwide, actually supplies more calories, more unhealthy fats, and less nutritional benefits than the wild-caught version. While wild salmon are, of course, wild, farmed salmon are essentially caged and fed a highly processed, unnatural diet. The fat content found in farmed salmon also contains more pro-inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids than wild-caught salmon. And wild salmon supplies a higher concentration of diabetes-fighting nutrients, including selenium, potassium, and vitamin B12. So it's no wonder why most nutritionists and doctors recommend choosing wild-caught over farmed salmon. Wild-caught salmon supplies approximately 20 grams of lean protein per serving, and protein aids the body in slowing the absorption of sugar into the bloodstream. Salmon also supplies the antioxidant astaxanthin, which works with omega-3 fatty acids to reduce LDL cholesterol and increase HDL cholesterol. This can help prevent the buildup of arterial plaque, thus reducing the risk of heart disease. Plus, wild salmon gives you the specific omega-3 fats EPA and DHA, which can work to reduce inflammation, lower blood pressure, and improve the function of arterial cells. A recent study found that participants who consumed wild-caught Atlantic salmon increased their blood levels of omega-3 fatty acids by 50% over a four-week period. And multiple studies indicate that regularly eating omega-3 rich fish, like salmon, can lower your risk of developing heart disease. Now that we know the best, which fish should you maybe toss back? The answer is just ahead. But real quick, you won't want to miss out on grabbing our three free gifts. A universe of diabetes fighting knowledge is at your fingertips with Superfoods for Diabetics, Episode 1 of that diabetes documentary, and snacks, meals, and desserts that lower blood sugar. Click the link below and get them all right now. Now, hold on to your preserver. We're about to encounter the three worst seafood choices for diabetics. Number three, eel, shark, swordfish, and tuna. What do these four types of fish have in common? The simple and sad answer is mercury. What makes their mercury content harmful to your health? We'll get to that in just a sec. But let's take a quick gander at those serpentine eels. There are two common types of eel. Saltwater eels are commonly referred to as anago in Japanese cuisine, and freshwater eels are unagi. Eel, in general, can supply positive nutrition with a great omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, plus choline, niacin, selenium, phosphorus, and vitamins E, D, B12, and A. Most eel sold worldwide is the freshwater unagi variety, and while it contains beneficial nutrients, it is also known to contain high levels of mercury, a heavy metal that's associated with many health complications. One study linked the consumption of excess mercury with an increased risk of heart attacks and elevated LDL cholesterol. Other research also suggests that high mercury exposure can heighten blood pressure. And a recent study involving nearly 2,000 men found that participants living with the highest levels of mercury were twice as likely to die from heart-related issues compared to men with lower levels of mercury in their system. Mercury poisoning can also lead to blindness and kidney failure. That's why it may be appropriate to avoid eating large amounts of shark, swordfish, and even tuna. As they sit atop the ocean food chain, these large fish tend to contain higher concentrations of mercury than smaller fish. In fact, a recent joint United States-Hong Kong study, which looked at mercury levels among the most popular types of shark fin meat, concluded that mercury levels within most commercially sold shark is 6 to 10 times higher than the amount deemed safe to consume. Reports also suggest that tuna has been overfished, thus raising their risk of extinction. Meanwhile, not only are eels rich in mercury, much of the eel sold in the states is farmed in polluted areas. Studies show that eels can easily absorb and store many of these pollutants, including polychlorinated biphenyls and even certain flame retardants, potentially rendering them more toxic when consumed regularly. 
Eels farmed in New Jersey rivers have become so contaminated, in fact, that the local government now recommends adults eat no more than one eel per year. Number 2. Tilapia This white, flaky fish is inexpensive and easily accessible. Wild freshwater tilapia are native to Africa, but these days it is currently farmed in over 130 countries. In fact, the majority of tilapia sold in the States is imported from China. Several reports, including one from the US Food and Drug Administration, have found that it is common practice for Chinese fish farmers to feed livestock feces to their tilapia as a method of cost savings. This can lead to bacteria, like salmonella, contaminating both the water and the fish themselves before they are shipped across the globe. Meanwhile, the Monterey Bay Aquarium's Seafood Watch reported that multiple toxic chemicals, banned stateside, were still in use at Chinese tilapia farms. In fact, between 2007 and 2012, the FDA rejected close to 200 shipments of Chinese tilapia due to their pollutant levels exceeding US safety requirements. But even if you can find locally sourced, less polluted tilapia, this fish comes with another health concern. Tilapia is actually far lower in omega-3 fatty acids than most other fish species, and they are also significantly higher in omega-6 fats. In fact, on average, tilapia contains 10 times less omega-3 content than wild-caught salmon. While omega-3 fats can lessen inflammation and triglycerides, omega-6 fatty acids are pro-inflammatory, and researchers have recommended avoiding tilapia if you are looking to lower your risk of heart disease. Studies show that ingesting high levels of omega-6 fats can raise blood pressure, increase your risk of blood clots, heart attacks, and strokes. And it can also cause your body to retain water. So, if you think any fish, including tilapia, can be great for your heart health and weight management, think again. Now, let's reveal the very worst type of seafood for diabetics. Number 1. Any deep fried fish. Okay, this may be a bit of a cheat, but in general, many people choose deep fried fish as their most common seafood choice. So we believe it's only appropriate that we strongly caution against overeating any type of fish which has been deep fried. The process of deep frying can strip many important nutrients from your fish, and it adds excess calories and fat content. For example, while a 100 gram serving of baked cod contains just over 100 calories, with 1 gram of fat, deep fried cod supplies over 230 calories and 12 grams of fat. Fried foods are cooked in highly processed saturated fat vegetable oils at high temperatures, which increases their trans fat content. And of course, trans fats have been linked to obesity and heart disease. In fact, a recent study found that women who ate one or more servings of deep fried fish per week had a 48% higher risk of heart failure compared with women who limited their deep fried fish consumption to three or less servings per month. Plus, a recent large study found that participants who consumed four to six servings of fried food each week were almost 40% more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. But studies also show that eating just two servings of deep fried fast foods, like the ever popular fish and chips, can double your risk of developing insulin resistance. So, despite the addictive taste, it is truly appropriate to avoid deep fried foods as much as possible. Instead, increase your intake of fish from fresh, local, wild caught sources. You can also try shallow pan frying or baking your fish with healthier cooking oils like olive oil, coconut oil, or even avocado oil. That way, you can still enjoy a bit of extra flavor without being exposed to the more severe health risks associated with deep frying. Well, now you know three of the best and three of the worst types of seafood choices, which may make or break your blood sugar management. But now we'd like to know, What's your very favorite type of seafood, and why? Tell us all about it by commenting below. Don't forget to claim your free gifts by clicking the link in the description below. And before you go, please like and subscribe. And if you really want to show your appreciation for our channel, you can send us a super thanks by clicking the thanks button below. 
Your support helps us continue to create informative, research-based videos. As always, we very much appreciate you watching this vid to the end. And from the bottom of our Diabetes Smarts heart, we thank you, and we wish you a happy, healthy day.